Hi there. So tell me, what do you do? So when people ask you that question, how do you answer? And why is it so important? Why do we keep asking this question? And why is it so important to nail down how to do it, how to answer it correctly? So I was in a lift the other day, one of those peer-to-peer -peer taxis, in case you don't know. And the driver was a really affable guy, super exciting, really excited about what he was doing. He was only moonlighting as a driver on the side, which so many of them do. He was actually an entrepreneur launching a business. And I said, oh, tell me about your business. And so he spent the next 15 minutes of our ride talking about his business. And by the end of it, I was still kind of confused about what he did. And, and then he asked me right before I was about to get out of the car, I had one foot out of the door already. And he said, so what do you do? And I said, well, I said, you know how entrepreneurs have a hard time communicating what they do? And he started laughing. He said, yeah, I do. And I said, well, I help them communicate a clear message in a fresh way so they can grow their business. And at that, he said, oh, I think I need your help. And I said, yeah, I think you do. He gave me his card and now we're gonna start working together. So my question to you is, your one-liner, your elevator pitch is your, it's the backbone of your marketing. And if you don't nail it, what kinds of opportunities are you missing? If I hadn't nailed it as I was getting out of the car, that guy wouldn't have hired me. So how long does it take you to say what you do? And two, is it really hitting the spot? Are you nailing it, right? So I wanna to talk to you about this today and I really wanna help you get to a place where it feels like you're nailing it uh, because I want you to get more business. And your one-liner is the beginning, it's the backbone, it's the first line of offense in your marketing, okay? So let's check into that today, shall we? I see some people there, Bonnie Bea, how are you, Bonnie? So tell me, Bonnie, what do you say when people say, what do you do? What do you say? And I know there's a lag, so I'm just gonna keep talking until I see your answer. Um, but let's, let's figure it out. So what's the process? How do we get to a place where we can get a really clear message for our one-liner, okay? There are three steps in the process. But before I give them to you, you're probably wondering, well, who are you to tell me about this one-liner and what are your qualifications? Well, first of all, if you don't believe me, then maybe you should believe this guy, okay? Does anybody know who this is? Bonnie, do you know who this is? Well, this is Richard Branson. And in case you didn't know, Richard Branson is, um, you know, he's head of Virgin Atlantic, Virgin, the, the airline company, Virgin Galactic. I mean, he is a serial entrepreneur, incredibly successful. And Richard Branson says that today, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you also have to be a great storyteller. It's not enough to just have a great product, but you have to let people know about it, right? So how are you communicating what you are doing? How are you communicating what you're offering, right? So believe Richard, believe me, it's the most important thing you're gonna do in your marketing, and I wanna help you nail that down. So what's the process, right? How do we get started on this? Well, there are three steps, like I said before. Step number one is be specific, right? So step number two, or sorry, I messed it up already because I'm, I'm listening to cars out the window and uh, lots of messages coming in. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm getting distracted. Um, let's see what Bonnie Bea has to say. Bonnie Bea says, I help women with chronic pain get their energy back so they can heal their bodies and get back to enjoying what they love. Okay, I love it, Bonnie. Super specific. Great, great. Um, Excellent. Let's, let's look at that again once we go through these three steps, okay? Because I think we can even make it tighter, all right? So what are the three steps? What are the ways that we can make our one-liner really tight? So step number one is identify the client's problem. And I'll go through these deeper, but first I'm gonna lay them all out for you. So step number one, identify the client's problem. 
Step number two, say your plan that solves their problem. And step number three is describe the happy ending, right? We have to give them something aspirational or they're just gonna get stuck in the what's missing with my life component. And you don't want them to be there. You want them to be feeling what they would feel after they get your result, right? Okay, so three steps again. Identify the client's problem. Two, share your plan for how you're gonna help them. And three is describe the happy ending, okay? So let's start digging into those a little bit more. So problem number one, uh, or sorry, step number one, the problem. So you've got to be specific, you've got to be clear, and you've got to leave a lot out. And because this is so important, I am going to give you a little visual so you remember, okay? I used to be a teacher, and I know that visuals really help. So uh, I am going to write this, and I found out last time I did a Facebook Live that if you put a sign up, people can't read it because it's mirrored, right? But I figured out, oh, there it is. I figured out how to do it. But the only thing is I have to wear white every time I do these, so I don't really like that. But today it's working great, right? So number one, step number one is identify the client's problem, right? And you're going to leave a lot out. This is the thing I see with my clients they struggle the most with. And they're like, oh, but I do this and I do this and I help them in this way and I help them in this way. But I tell you what, you don't have time to share every freaking thing you do. You just have to say one thing, one thing that's going to hook them and you will leave a lot out. Okay. Oh, Bonnie's saying it's still backwards. How's that? Interesting. I'm, I'm actually filming on both um, my computer and my phone, and my phone looks one way and my computer looks another way. So anyway, you can see it now, I think, Bonnie. It says leave a lot out. Hold it higher. Okay, leave a lot out. So you can't add a bunch of stuff onto your one-liner. You just don't have time, right? A one-liner is not a performance. A one-liner is not a monologue. It's communication. And if you're not communicating with people, then you're not doing your job. So you have to leave a lot out. You have to decide what is the one thing you're going to share, right? What is the one thing you're going to share? So, for example, for mine, I know that my clients struggle with um communicating a clear message, right? So what do I do? How do I name this problem um, while still being succinct and engaging with people, right? And the way I do it and the way I, I tell my clients to do it is it's not actually a one-liner, it's a two-liner, but it starts with a question, right? So you're engaging them, right? So start with a question. So this is the way I do it. I say, well, so you know how many entrepreneurs struggle to talk about what they're doing, right? And chances are I'm talking to an entrepreneur if they're asking me this question because I can I can kind of sense it, right? I might switch it around if I'm talking to someone else who's not an entrepreneur, I would say it differently. But if I know that there's someone who might need my services, I say, well, you know how many entrepreneurs kind of struggle to, to talk about what they do? And they often look at me and they're like, yeah, that's me. Right. So I've already hooked them a little bit. And then I say, well, I help them communicate a clear message in a fresh way so they can grow their business. So I help them communicate a clear message in a fresh way. There are a lot of other things I do with people, but I don't add that in because there's just not enough time. So ask yourself, get to the heart of what you're doing. And that is what you're going to share. And again, like I said, you're going to leave a lot out, right? Leave a lot out. It's about being brief, right? It's about being brief. So um, the second step in the process, the first step was identify the client's problem. The second step in the process was make it feel like a new idea. So you're, you're, you're saying a plan that solves their problem, okay? And when I say plan, I don't mean you're going to lay out 
every step of what you do. You know, for example, I'm not going to say, um, well, you know, first we sit down and, you know, we do a, a three hour session where we get really clear on your goals. And no, I'm not saying all that. I just say something that is a little mysterious and it feels like a new idea, right? I say, well, I have a process that helps entrepreneurs communicate a clear message in a fresh way. So all I'm saying there is I have a process, right? Everybody has a process to what they do, but the fact that I'm naming it, that is creating a, you know, a, a branded experience, if you will, but it's just making it a thing, right? When I say I have a process, don't you feel a little excited? You feel a little like, oh, what's her process? You want to lean in a little bit, right? You want to ask me. So I encourage you to um, share what your plan is for them and make it feel like something mysterious, right? Make it a simple idea and make it feel like a new idea, something that's unique to you. So maybe you're saying I have a process or I have a three-step plan, right? Maybe you think that sounds a little cheesy, but you can tweak it to make it right for you, okay? So are you picking up what I'm laying down, Bonnie Bea? Yes? All right. Um, so the third step is to describe the happy ending, right? Describe the happy ending. So when I'm saying I help entrepreneurs communicate a clear message in a fresh way, I end with the happy ending. The happy ending is, I'm getting a lot of hearts. Thanks, Bonnie. Uh, the happy ending is what are you, what's the result that you are offering them, right? This is marketing 101. Right? What is it? What are the results you're offering them that they're going to walk away happy and feeling great about? Remember, people don't really care so much about what exactly you're offering, right? I, I, I say this a lot when I do my workshops, but it's not what people get these days, but it's what people get to feel, right? It's what people get to feel. Because let's face it, um, Barbara, I know you're listening. Barbara is a photographer, right? So there are many photographers in the world, just like there are many brands of toothpaste. But what are you, what is the happy ending you're providing, right? Uh, Arm & Hammer baking soda toothpaste versus Crest, right? What's the happy ending that Arm & Hammer is uh, providing its customers? Well, I would say that Arm & Hammer is probably providing, you know, like um, a natural clean, right? And it's really like elemental clean. I like Arm & Hammer because I don't like a lot of bullshit, right? I don't need all the bells and whistles. I don't need the colored gel and the sparkles of AIM, right? I just want it to be simple and I want it to clean my teeth, right? So that's the feeling I'm leaving with. I'm leaving with a feeling of, Yes, it's doing the job, it's efficient, it's practical. That's what I want, okay? And so, for example, Barbara, as a photographer, what's the feeling people are leaving you with and how is that different from all the other people that are photographers, right? Are you leaving them with the feeling of, yeah, we nailed that headshot, right? Is it about efficiency for you? Is it about art, right? What's the feeling you're leaving them with? So this goes back to the third point in the three-step process is what's the happy ending you want them to have? What's the happy ending you want them to have? So my happy ending is so you can grow your business, right? Super simple. I'm not adding like a three-pronged answer, which I see so much. People are like, well, I want you to feel, you know, empowered, conscious, and free, right? And I'm like, I don't, I, you've already lost me. That's way too many things. Um, empowered is overused. I don't even know what conscious means and free, like, okay, that's not really specific enough, right? So get super specific and keep it simple. And again, again, leave a lot out. Leave a lot out. That's my challenge to you. You can't add it all in. It's impossible. So it has to be what they want and it has to be brief, right? So I know because I've done a lot of market research, I know that my clients, they all want their business to grow. That's it. They want their business to grow, right? I know what their struggle is. And of course, that's what I uh, mentioned in the beginning of the one-liner, 
It's the problem, right? I know they struggle with communicating about their business, right? They struggle with communicating about their business. And so I name that in the first problem section. Then I say how I'm gonna help them with my plan, which is a process, right? And then last I say, so your business grows. So you can grow your business. It's not rocket science, right? It's not rocket science. And you know, the main thing is too, people can smell it a mile away when you're promising them the moon in the sky, right? I'm not promising eternal life. I'm saying your business is going to grow. And that is true because it happens. And I know that that's what my clients want, right? So let's review this again, right? Because it's super simple. And then I want to take some of your, um, some of your responses. Hi, Daniela. Good to see you on here. Yeah, the three-pronged answer. Um, don't do it, right? because it's a formula that used to be hip and cool, but now people can smell it, right? People really just want clear communication. They don't want you to blow smoke up their asses with your fancy one-liner, you know? It just doesn't work, right? So just get super real and let them know how you, like what you do and how you're gonna help them. That's it, right? So again, let's do these all over again. So the process. Who remembers the first process? Oh, Sophie's saying my video stopped. Huh. Well, I don't know. It looks like it's running, so I'm just going to keep talking. Um, so who remembers what is the first? It's a three-step process, right, to figuring out your one-liner. So what is the first thing? What is the first thing that you need to answer in your one-liner? Who can answer? Daniela, Barbara, Sophie, Bonnie Bea, who can answer? Bonnie Bea says it looks fine here. Awesome. Great. So what, what's the first thing that you need to answer in your one-liner? Who remembers? I said three, it's a three-step process. What's the first thing? I'm going to wait because I'm a teacher, right? Okay, Bonnie, see you later. All right. What's the first thing? Yes, Barbara, thank you. Yeah, identify the client's problem. Barbara, what are your what is your client's problem? Like the one thing that your clients consistently say. And this is all about market research, right? Like you have to know what your clients are struggling with. You can't just make this shit up and you have to use their language, right? So Barbara, what's the one thing that your um, your clients consistently say they they need or their like what's their pain? What's their pain? And I'm, I'm gonna keep talking again because there's a lag, but Barbara, I'm waiting for your answer, right? So what is the one thing that your clients struggle with? Again, my clients struggle with getting clear, right? Clear communication. They can't, they can't share what they do in a succinct way, right? So I always start with a question. Start with a question. Your one-liner is not really a one-liner, by the way, right? It's not a dialogue, it's not a monologue. Um, but it should engage immediately, which is why I start with a question. So I always say, well, you know how many entrepreneurs often struggle to um, talk about what they do, right? So starting with a question, identifying the problem. They struggle to talk about what they do, right? What's the second part of the process? Okay, Barbara's just timing in now. She said they need strong professional visual imagery to promote themselves. Okay, so what's what's the pain that they have, right? So maybe the pain is um, their, their images um, don't convey their uh, professional strong um, essence, right? I don't know what their words are, and, and this is the key, you guys, is when you are talking to your clients, like maybe you're on a consultation call or something, take impeccable notes, right? Find out what they're struggling with, and then those words are going to go into your marketing, right? Because you're not creating some fancy language. You're using their language, and it's got to be simple, and it's got to be conversational, right? So second point was... What? So first was to identify the client's problem. Second point was say your plan that solves their problem, right? And let me spend a little bit more time on this because I feel like this is the least, um, the least clear point. So you don't need to say everything about what you do, but you do need to allude to the fact that you have a plan about what 
you're going to do with them, right? Because let's let's just put it this way, you know, if if I said, "Oh yeah, I can help you." And and they say, "Oh, well, how do you how do you help me?" And I said, "Well, no, I'm just going to help you." Right? You're going to you're going to pull back a little bit. You feel a little less trust in me, right? So just from the get-go, you want to say that you've got a plan, right? So, you know, I have a plan or I have a process or, you know, I have, I have a, I helped a photographer client the other day who uh, we came up with, um, I have an image direction process that, right? So we just, we just kind of, we branded it a little bit. We didn't say exactly what it was, but now it's an image direction process. And that feels somehow like I've got more of a handle on it, right? And aren't you curious? You're a little hooked. You're like, oh, wow, he's got an image direction process. Well, I'm sure every photographer has a freaking image direction process. But the fact that he named it already makes me want to lean in more, right? Okay? So point number one, identify the client's problem. I always use a question to frame it, to engage who's ever listening. Second is uh, share what your plan is, right? Maybe it's a plan, maybe it's a process. Uh, just say it, keep mystery around it. You don't need to like lay it out in all of its detailed glory, right? Just say, oh, I have a process that helps entrepreneurs communicate a clear message, right? All right, so the third point is what? Who can remember? Uh, okay, and so I'm looking for what is the third point, who can remember, and then I'm looking at the comments. So Daniela says, my clients complain about being stuck in fear. Okay, all right. So you can use that in your, your client's problem uh, at the first part of the process. How can we turn that into a question, right? Uh, maybe it could be a question like, um, well, it, and I need to know who your clients are, Danielle. They're uh, yoga people, aren't they? They're yogis and things like that. Um, I need to know a little bit who they are before I can help you wordsmith that. But think about how you can turn it into a question, right? Turn it into a question so the person on the other side is immediately engaged, right? Um, so the third point was describe the happy ending, right? So the happy ending, yeah, thanks, Barbara, that just came in. Awesome. So describe the happy ending. The happy ending for my clients is that their business grows, right? That's it. It's so simple. It's so simple. Their business grows. And for me, you know, some people... Um, some people have said, well, maybe you need to say, you know, attract your ideal clients and whatnot. But, you know, I, I really believe that some phrases are overused. You can just feel it. I feel like attract your ideal clients was like two years ago. People were saying that. And now it's it's everywhere. Right. Words are really important. They um, there's a texture and there's a feeling to every word. And if you're using words that a lot of people have used and are using, your message is going to feel really flat and it's going to feel like it's been copied, right? Some other words that I see all the time are like empowered, for example. Oh, you know, I'm going to empower you. Uh, okay, that was cool probably five years ago, but now it just falls really flat. I don't even know what that means anymore, okay? Um, uh, you know, in the tech industry, disrupt, right? I'm sure you've all heard that and, and it's been made fun of a lot, especially here in the Bay Area. And now that word has become passe. So pay attention to what words you're using because they really do matter. They really do matter. Find a word that people haven't used or just find a word that is is kind of benign. And, and you know, like, for example, I use the word communicate. That's benign. We use it in everyday conversation. And that's why it feels really clean. Uh, because I'm not trying to be fancy, right? Okay, uh, Daniela says guilty. Are you using the word empower? Yeah, maybe. So stop using it, right? Just stop using it. Find something else that feels authentic and real and true and clear, okay? Because that's what is going to hook people is when they feel that you're authentic and true and clear, okay? People are attracted to clarity, so get clear, right? Um, so the happy ending my happy ending is so your business grows. Um, how about uh, Barbara? What's the happy ending that you um, offer your clients? Daniela, what's the happy ending you offer your clients? And Sophie, I'm not sure if you're still listening. Sophie's an artist, so this is a little bit different for artists, right? Um, you know, I your happy ending, you, you're not going to say, so you can enjoy my painting on your wall. Like that would feel a little strange, right? But what I want to caution artists and creative people is when somebody asks what you do, so what do you do? Don't just say, oh, I'm an artist, 
right? Or, oh, I'm a photographer, right? Because you're, that ends the conversation, right? What flavor of artist are you? What are you curious about? What do you explore with your work? What kind of a photographer are you? What do you, what do you focus on? What problems do you solve, right? So don't let yourself off the hook by saying, oh, I'm a photographer, you know? Yeah, it's easy to do, but it's not going to get you any more business unless that person really, really connects with you, and that takes some time, right? Okay, Sophie's here. Good, Sophie. So, so we've gone through these three steps. Now, I want to ask you, what do you do after you figure out your one-liner? Because it's all fine and good to have a one-liner. Like, okay, you nail it, and you've got it written down, right? And then you go out in the world, and the next day, you forget it, and you go back to saying, oh, I'm an artist. Right. Or, oh, you know, I empower women to, blah, blah, you know, so here's my trick for you is write your one liner down on a index card or something and put it on your wall. You know, put it somewhere where you can see it all the time and memorize it. Right. Memorize it because this is your first line of offense in your marketing. It really is connecting with people one on one, saying what you do having them put you, this unique you and what you offer in their mind, in their Rolodex for, you know, when they need someone who needs, uh, or when they, when they need someone to help them with their communication for their business, when they need someone who does headshots for photography, right? You want to hook that information in their mind. So you've got to deliver it powerfully. And if you're kind of tripping over your words or if you're changing it every time, uh, people are going to feel it, right? So you really need to stick it. So my suggestion to you is write it down, stick it on your wall, stick it next to your computer, wherever you need to stick it in your pocket and memorize it, right? Memorize it and use it every time you need someone, every time you need someone. And that's going to become your first line of offense with your marketing. And it's really, I like to say it's the backbone of your marketing because once you figure that out, you're gonna bring it into all your other marketing collateral. And actually, I this is first part in a series of Facebook Lives and today we talked about your one-liner. Next time, we're gonna talk about your tagline, right? Um, because every business needs a tagline. It's not just the big companies like Nike or Coke. Every business needs a tagline because people need to understand in a real, fast snippet what you're about, right? So one liner is spoken, uh, your tagline is written, and the next Facebook Live uh, is gonna be about your website landing page, right? Because that's your first line of marketing offense online, right? People are gonna go to your website landing page, it's just like a business card these days. So what is it, what is it doing? How is it communicating, right? So um, August, today is August 11th, so we just talked about a one-liner. Uh, the next Facebook Live in the series is going to be August 18th, which is, as I'm speaking now, it's next Friday, uh, here in the same place on my Facebook business page. And we're going to be talking about taglines, how to great, create a great tagline, because it's, you can do it. It's, it's not, you don't need to hire a fancy marketing company uh, to do it. You just need a formula, right? Um, and finally, August 25th is the website landing page. How are you communicating your business online? What are you saying, okay? All right, so I'm about to wrap it up here, but let me, let me look at some of these comments. So Barbara says ultimately the same thing. Their business grows, but also they feel more professional as the uh, happy ending, right? Right, so I would agree, yeah, business grows is, it's it's a super basic um, result that they're gonna get, and Barbara, I think yours needs to speak a little bit more to the image side of things, right? Because business grows could be among many different, um, you know, parts of the business. It could be about, um, you know, strategy or product or marketing, right? But you're focusing specifically on the image side of the business equation. So how can we make it so you're talking about image and you're creating a happy ending for them based on the image so their business grows, okay? All right. Um, all right, Danielle is coming next Friday, awesome. Um, Okay, and Danielle is asking, do you have a list of words that you would recommend to replace the overused word empowered? Well, I mean, think about it. What does empowered mean, right? Empowered means, um, you know, gain power or like give power to or, um, uh, you know, like 
I think it's kind of, it's like gain power or feel power from something. Um, so how would you challenge yourself to use that in a sentence without using that word, right? So I was empowered by the, um, the training I watched yesterday. You could say, well, you know, I, I really feel a lot stronger because I watched that training, right? Something like that. Just take that word out of your vocabulary and use other words. Just put it in everyday language. Um, we just get in habits. Uh, with our speaking and in the way we think and we use the same word all the time. I challenge yourself to not use um, those words that everybody else is using because they're they're overused, you know. Uh, use words that are clear and simple. Don't try to get fancy, right? Don't try to get fancy. It's all about communication, right? And the final thing I want to say is that, and I said it already, but I see this so many times. When people ask you what you do, it's not a performance, right? It's not a performance. You're not saying, well, I help entrepreneurs, you know, it's communication, right? So take a breath, ask them a question, and then lay it out really fast. And like I said, and I'm gonna show you again, leave a lot out, leave a lot out, okay? You have like three seconds, so don't, don't like, make their eyes glaze over. You got to leave a lot out. Find the one word or the phrase that really lands, right? It really lands because it's not impossible, but it does take some work, right? Okay. So like I said, uh, August, um, what are the dates? August 18th, we're going to talk about taglines for your business. August 25th, we're going to look at landing pages, which is your, you know, it's basically your online business card. What's it saying? What's it communicating, right? And I'm looking forward to help you do that. Um, if you need individualized help with your business communications, how are you putting yourself out there? How are you, what are you saying? How are you saying it? Then click the link in the, um, the thing, I can't, great, I'm gonna help you with communications and I can't even name the little box on the side. Click the link in the sidebar and um, get on my calendar. I have, uh, you know, free 30 minute one-on-ones uh, with me, consultations, and I wanna see what you're struggling with and see how I can help you communicate your business message better. All right, I hope this was helpful. Uh, great seeing you all, bye Daniela, and uh, bye Sophie and Barbara, and, um, and Bonnie. Yeah, great seeing you all. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Barbara. And um, we'll see you next Friday on August 18th. Bye.